with Hashem's loving grace. This is Laser Brody from the Holy Land of Israel with Amuna Beams, episode number 12, broadcasting as all of the Jewish people around the world have an open wound because the entire Jewish people together with all of America mourn the tragic massacre of a policeman, the father of five, and three innocent citizens, at least two of whom were Hasidic Jews. Violent anti-Semites with a car full of a thousand rounds of automatic ammunition and enough explosives to do da- mega damage. Heaven forbid they stormed a kosher supermarket in the Hasidic neighborhood of Jersey City, spraying deadly gunfire in every direction. In addition to the four martyrs, may Hashem avenge their blood. From the information we have, the other policemen were badly wounded, and so we pray that Hashem should send them a full and speedy recovery. But we have to ask ourselves a question, why? No Jew could say that the Jersey City Massacre doesn't affect him or her. The Gemara obligates us to engage in serious self-searching whenever a fellow Jew's life is severed. So we have to stop and think. And Muna teaches us that everything is from Hashem. And the very first of the 13 principles of our faith tell us that Hashem does everything, did, does, and will do everything. So if we know that everything is from Hashem, and we add the fact that Hashem is a loving Father that does everything for the best of our purpose, then we really are behooved to ask ourselves, why did the Almighty enable something so horrific to happen in Jersey City? This is the same question that any thinking individual must ask after any terrorist onslaught. Whether it's in Jersey City or in Jerusalem or Johannesburg, it doesn't make a difference. An attack against a Jew in the United States of America is an attack against a Jew in Israel. Canada, Germany, UK, Argentina, or anywhere else on earth. Why? Because we're all guarantors of one another and we're all in the same boat. Gamora says, Kol Yisrael arevim We're all guarantors of each other. One Jew can't drill a hole in the floor of the boat and claim it doesn't affect anyone else because we're all in the same boat. And if there's a hole in the deck, we all sink together, heaven forbid, whether we like it or not. So whenever we forget that we're one, we're one people, and that every other Jew is our brother or sister, whenever we forget that and we allow ourselves the questionable luxury of bickering with one another and hating one another and destroying our unity, Hashem sends a Hitler or a Haman or a Saddam Hussein to remind us that we're all one people. These anti-Semitic tyrants and terrorists, they have one characteristic in common that stands out. They hate every single Jew. You know something? It sounds sadistic, but in that respect, they're egalitarian. They don't discern between religious and non-religious, Zionists and non-Zionists, Orthodox, conservative, reform, Sfari, Mashkenazi, black Jews or white Jews, Uh uh-uh. Before they fire a rocket or pull a trigger, they don't ask if the target is a Balchuva or a Gabor or a Jew that was born in the program. They don't ask if he's a Litvak or a Chassid. They don't care what color kippah he's wearing. And if they they don't care whether a woman covers her hair or not, and if she does cover her hair, whether it's with a a shaitl or a tickle, they don't care. You know why? because the tyrants burn all the Jews together in the same gas chamber and crematorium, heaven forbid. So, look what's going on. The Divine Presence, if we only had spiritual awareness, we could hear the Divine Presence crying out to us and saying, my senseless children, if you die together, why don't you learn to live together? And as much tears as we're shedding about Jersey City, and our brother and sister that got killed there, Hashem is shedding many more tears than we are because they're his beloved children. And the bullets of Jersey City on Tuesday, December 10th, 2019, they didn't differentiate either between one Jew and another. Now our sages, they teach us that the angels of destruction cannot harm 
a hair on a Jewish head until one Jew harms another Jew, whether verbally or physically, doesn't matter. The Holy Tanaic Sage, Rabbi Lazar Ben Yaakov, Rabbi Lazar Ben Yaakov, he explains this spiritual phenomenon in Pirkei Ovot, that's like the Fathers, Tractate Ovot, the Mishnah. He says that every transgression of Torah creates an evil angel. In other words, a negative spiritual force that comes down and manifests itself in Hamas or Hezbollah or a neo-Nazi or some other violent anti-Semite terrorist. You know what that means? It means that the outside forces that torment the Jewish people were created measure for measure from the strife and slander that the Jewish people torment each other. The Chofetz Chaim, he yelled his throat out about this. And he used to say that every time one Jew says something bad about another Jew, some Jew hater gets a green light to pull a trigger. It's a stark and very sad truth. So it's by no means a coincidence that the two Jewish martyrs of Jersey City, as they're being buried, the Knesset here in Israel is dispersing and Israel's going needlessly into the polls for the third time this year. Why? <laughs> in all my 50 years in Israel, I don't remember such a period of slander and bickering and utter lack of unity. Intramural Jewish hatred it's just as much as going on abroad as it is in Israel, and it's erupting like a once dormant volcano. So, do we need a war to bring us together? The mudslinging, especially in the media, it's unprecedented. And politicians from every single point on the political spectrum, they add fuel to the fire, with the media rubbing their hands in glee to report the nasty headlines. Let me ask every politician or reporter in Israel, as we stand over the fresh graves of the Jersey City martyrs, can you say that your hands did not spill this blood? You know, we have to ask ourselves the same exact question as we reassess what we said on the phone or what we wrote on Facebook or what we on WhatsApp or maybe made a snide remark about the rabbi or one of the community leaders. Could heaven forbid our hands spill this innocent blood? that our transgression and intramural hate, which is a terrible transgression, it created the evil angels that caused this, heaven forbid. Cherish brothers and sisters, if we would only internalize the fact that every utterance against the fellow Jew triggers another Pittsburgh, a Jersey City, or a Shderot terrorist attack, we'd curb our tongues. The more Intramural hate continues, the more knives and bullets morph into ballistic missiles, heaven forbid. So the only way we can terminate terror and tragedy is to put an end to Lush and Hara, to put an end to slander, to dissension, to intramural hate. Disagreements are fine, as long as you love and respect the Jew that you disagree with. That's an outright, unconditional command of Torah. Ve'ahavta le'acha kamocha. Love your neighbors yourself. People don't realize that insulting one's fellow human is a lot worse than many other serious transgressions. Because if a person transgresses against the Shem, it's relatively easy to do tshuva. But he transgresses against a fellow man. The gates of tshuva are locked until he apologizes and placates a fellow man. And this is not something we're just dreaming up. Some nice, it's in the laws of, of Yom Kippur. From this moment on, if we cannot say something complimentary about a fellow Jew, then let's not say it at all, because we can no longer afford the luxury of intramural hate. It's taking too many lives. It's enough. So let's do something in honor of the sacred memories of the Jersey City martyrs. Let's start loving each other. And if we can't love each other, let's at least do our very best to avoid any trace of slander and evil speech and to curb our tongues whenever something not especially complimentary is on it. So let's try and ask Hashem to help us, help us care about each other, help us be concerned with one another, help us do chesed, do loving kindness for one another, and may God bless, help us succeed. Amen.